This is a film about the Nasirema, an industrialized tribe living in the urban sprawl of Los Angeles, California. By following the lives and activities of three of its members, we will explore the complex economic, social, and intellectual lives of these often misunderstood people. Lana is a student, a typical member of the Nasirema. Though her homeland is thousands of miles away, she is adapted to the ways of her newfound home. Jean-Paul is a member of a higher level of Nasirema society, the so-called graduate student. Gilly is also a student, a typically bright and cheerful member of the Nasirema tribe. Gilly is a member of a pronounced subculture within the larger group, the so-called Greeks. Lana is hungry, and to assuage the rumbling in her belly, she heads for the local food shop. The choices are difficult, but eventually she decides on a sugary treat and moves to purchase it. The mechanism of economic transference among the Nasirema is well hidden, but the artifact seen here is used symbolically to represent money. In fact, physical money of the type with which we are familiar is not often in evidence among the Nasirema, nor is a method for procuring it. Here we see the Nasi Raymans waiting in long lines to procure the possibility of receiving dollars ex machina, literally dollars from the machine, called by them financial aid. This money is released to the lower classes by mysterious beings known as administration and is received only by the most lucky among the group. The other major sources of subsistence in their economy are these mailboxes. Local superstition holds that if a needy individual waits long enough, mysterious beings may reward them. This is similar to the Melanesian cargo cults of the early 20th century. However, unlike the Melanesians, among the Nasirema, patience is often rewarded. A very few Nasirema work directly to support themselves. This sort of activity is viewed with some skepticism by other members of the society. Viewed by many members of the community as the most important aspect of daily life, social encounters consume an enormous amount of time and energy on the part of the Nasirema. Casual interactions revolve daily around gossip over the local weather, the opposite sex, and classes. Discussions about the weather are perhaps the most intrinsically ironic, as the Nasirema live in a climate of almost interminable warm and cloudless days. More complex social rituals generally attached to mating and intergender games are common, however. Personal grooming and appearance are at a premium among the Nasirema, and every article of clothing is carefully selected prior to the application of complex body paint. Here we see Lana deciding as to which set of paints to apply. Whilst carefully weighing the options, she is confident that whichever choice she makes, she will be able to attract a member of the opposite sex. Courtship among the Nasirema is a very interesting and complex and elaborate uh, phenomenon because uh, preparations can take years going back in time for men who work with dull machines for months to try to augment the size of their muscles, whereas women will uh, submit to a surgeon with a knife to have their bodies altered and their waist reduced, while at the same time having their mammary area augmented before courtship. Invariably, put on elaborate facial paint over before courtship because they are hoping to increase their chances to score. That is to say, sexual gratification is as much the aim for, of courtship as is marriage. And in this, they're very reminiscent of the bonobos, the pygmy species of chimp that's being studied recently, in which there's a great deal of sexual activity. The difference, of course, is that the Nasarima are much more self-conscious about it. While the differences between males and females are perhaps overly stressed within the society, the preparatory rituals for social excursions are intriguingly similar. After several hours of physical and mental preparation, often known as psyching up, 
our friends head out for an exciting evening of dancing, imbibing intoxicating beverages, and continuous, often sexual, social interaction. Sports among the Nasarima are really a substitute for warfare. They're a kind of ritualized warfare that takes the place of the frequent fighting that used to take place between groups. So the sports hero is admired like a warrior for being strong and courageous and agile and cooperative with his group, his team, as well as competitive, all within the confines of a harmless group activity. A separate social system exists within the larger bounds of Nasirema society, that of the fraternity and sorority, gender-coded social organizations referred to with the symbols and names of an ancient people, the Greeks. Gilly is a member of a Greek organization. Here she puts on the ritual clothing that identifies her particular lineage within the Greek subculture. Though social interaction is not limited to other members of the same or even other Greek organizations, this is often considered the norm. Members of these organizations refer to each other within a terminology of fictive kinship and may maintain ties with their sisters and brothers across many years and thousands of miles. Aside from companionship and support, the Greek organizations provide additional avenues of social release for their members, sponsoring sometimes elaborate celebrations for the outlet of routine stresses and frustrations. However, it is also within the framework of the Greek organizations that one of the most moving and beautiful of all Nasirema rituals takes place. Each week, members of the female and male ordered groups purchase flowers for members of an opposite sex, ritually related organization, as we see Gilly doing here. Through the giving of attractive floral arrangements, ties are maintained within the Greek community that both bind it together and serve as an identifier of relatedness, reifying the boundaries of the in-group of related social affines. In theory, the life's goal of the Nasirema is the pursuit of knowledge, both at a personal level and at the accumulated ancestral wisdom of the entire group. Within the social structures of the tribe, specialization known as majors and minors is not only encouraged but required. The immediate effects of this specialization are generally acknowledged by the Nasirema through their impact on future subsistence possibilities and current time available for purely social interaction. Here we see Lana deciding between a tall and grand latte. She knows if she chooses poorly, she will not be able to stay awake during the long biology lecture she knows she must endure. Though large classes are commonplace, smaller discussion sections allow for more interpersonal relationships between the students and their instructor, the purveyor of knowledge. Scholarship and learning among the Nasirima is a subject which they themselves consider to be very important, theoretically, because they also spend a great deal of time on other activities, such as courtship, for example. Yet, nonetheless, the figure of the scholar, the good scholar, is much admired. Stratification among Nasirema is based on age, seniority, and personal material wealth. The professors are at the top of the hierarchy, allegedly great fonts of ancestral wisdom, to whom the lowest classes must eventually supplicate themselves. At the next level are graduate students, Nasi Raymans who have achieved a greater age but still lack significant financial resources. The vast majority of the society, however, is made up of students, an in-group generally marked by youth, abundant social activities, and surprisingly, a greater overall level of wealth than that of the professors. In addition, there is the so-called administration, Mysterious beings who reside in monumental structures such as this one. Secret masters of the world of the Nasirema, they remain a mystery to us, as our film crew was unable to penetrate their sacred spaces. Occasionally the proponents of various faiths and foreign gods attempt to convert members of the student class. Their efforts usually fail, for the Nasirema seem far more concerned with the bounty and pleasures of this world than the next. However, there are a number of rarely seen spirits and entities of seemingly supernatural power. Chief among these are the beings known as Mom and Dad. Here we see Gilly communicating with these spirits. Wow. Yeah. Perhaps she is requesting money, for it is known that they are the spirits linked to the maintenance of financial resources. Okay. Sadly, our time among the Nasirema was cut short, as those bastards back home cut our funding. 
But the Nasi Rema, despite being an idealistic, seemingly frivolous people surrounded by hostile tribes, are survivors, and their joyful ways and carefree primitive lifestyle will surely thrive for many years, a resource for future generations of anthropologists to objectify and exploit. We leave Lana, Jean-Paul, and Gilly secure in the knowledge that we have covered every aspect of their lives in this film, that by bringing their thoughts and actions to light, you will now be able to understand these beautiful people. And with that, we say goodbye, and begin our own long journey home.